Hello Bezas, welcome back to my channel or if you are new here then just welcome. Hi my name is Brenda. I do paranormal videos here on my channel so if that is something that you are interested in please consider subscribing down below and turn on your post notifications so you do not miss when I post another video like this one. Now with all of that being said let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. I quickly needed to interrupt the video to thank Rose Forever New York for partnering with me once again. I have worked with them quite a few times and have loved every bouquet they have sent me. They are a New York based company that designs luxurious rose boxes that are preserved with natural oils to last for up to a year. All the materials used for the boxes are vegan and come in various different colors and shapes. There are also several rose colors to choose from and every box is handcrafted. These roses make an amazing gift and with the various options to choose from, they can fit into anyone's decor. These are the roses that were gifted to me back in March, so it's been about 5 months so far and they are still in great condition and look just as beautiful as when I first got them. I love them so much and you will too. Make sure to check them out, their info will be in the video description, and use my code BEYONDBESA25 for $25 off your entire purchase site-wide. Now back to the video. Okay, hello everybody, welcome to another video. Um, before I do start on today's video, I just want to say real quick, obviously I am not in my usual setup. I am currently filming somewhere else. And I needed to just do this to be able to get a video out for this week because I was not going to have another chance to film at home or anywhere else because honestly I have to be here and this is the only place that I can film right now. But yeah, I just wanted to really quickly say that because obviously anytime I'm somewhere different, I feel like there's going to be questions being like, where are you? What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you not filming in your room? So I always feel like I have to say something. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into the video, which as you guys can see by the title is reading some of my subscribers' scary stories. I know that you guys really enjoy these and I like reading them and seeing what your guys' experiences have been and just you know getting scared together so grab some snacks get comfortable and let's go ahead and get into these stories hopefully the audio is not too bad as i said i'm in a different setting i don't have all of my equipment i couldn't bring it this time around so i just have to do with what i have and hopefully the lighting is also not too shabby but anyway guys let's go ahead and get into story number one. Oh, actually i forgot if you want to send in your own stories as i said they don't have to be your personal stories they could be from somebody who told them to you like your friend your mom your grandpa your grandma anybody in your family who has ever told you a scary story and you actually got scared from it send it in to me type it out for me let me know what the story was that way i can read it here and you can be featured in one of these videos so the only place that i read stories from is from my email which is beyondbsaparanormal at gmail.com that is the only place that you should be sending these stories in and the only place that I read them from. Okay so with that being said now let's go ahead and get into story number one and this is sent in to me by my good friend Lily. She sends a lot of stories in and she usually has very creepy eerie stories. Thank you again for sending another one to me and let's get right into it. And she says I prefer to just be called Lily <laughs> and I will call you Lily only without the username and she says I hope everyone listening right now ended their work days smoothly. My dad has told me the story at least 25 times between the ages of 6 to 15. He has always been a non-believer of anything paranormal, supernatural, and spiritual up to this day. This happened on his last year of high school. He had so many friends in school, but the ones he hung out with during the week weekends were older than him. This is his party boy era. Drinking, karaoke, dancing, smoking, all the good stuff. He quit smoking at 21 though because of a traumatic experience where he burnt his favorite shirt. He was so vain too and cared about his appearance a lot. Going back, he had his this friend called Pablo, a naughty young man who works as his trusted staff at a funeral home in their small town. Pablo would put on clothing that don't match on the corpses for his entertainment and position them in certain ways to create whatever scenario he can think of. His most favorite is setting up two male corpses to appear like they're fist fighting. 
One Saturday night, he went to a house party with Pablo. My dad was having a blast upon meeting a lot of cute girls from the city. While Pablo was just being his stupid self dancing oddly and screaming nonsense till he passed out, my dad waited for him to sober up a little, enough to walk home. About over an hour later, Pablo woke up and they went back to his place together with my dad guiding him in walking straight. They got to his place and Pablo passed out again on his couch. My dad decided to sleep on the floor beside him. In the middle of sleeping, my dad awakened to the sound of Pablo screaming bloody murder. He jumped, turned on the lights, grabbed whatever he could to use as a weapon. He was ready to fight. Still out of breath, Pablo told him, sit down with me. It's not an intruder. My dad was annoyed and asked, now what? Pablo was agitated and could barely talk when he said, one of the corpses grabbed my leg. I could see the face very clearly. I recognized the man. My dad was even more pissed. He said, Jesus, you're crazy, crazy, like what the? The dumbass learned his lesson and never got too drunk or made fun of the dead bodies at work anymore. Thank you so much for allowing me to participate in your storytelling. Writing to you is always fun and watching you is always relaxing. Thank you so much, Lily. I always appreciate you sending them in because without you, I wouldn't be able to do these videos without you and everybody else who sends these stories in. So truly, I appreciate you. And this story was so creepy. Of course, he kind of got what he deserved for playing around with bodies. I'm pretty sure the spirits who those bodies belonged to were not too happy to see that's how their bodies were being handled before going to, you know, where, wherever it is that they go after. Very creepy. I don't even know what I would do in that situation per usual. I would just be flipping out for sure. Thank you so much for the very good story. So, But sorry that it happened. I guess your dad was kind of just a witness to it. It wasn't really his experience, but still knowing that would be terrifying. But as you said, your dad doesn't believe that stuff either way. <laughs> now let's go ahead and get into story number two. And this one is sent in to me by Arbit Rodriguez. As I said last time, I think I couldn't pronounce this and I apologized. Um, but it says by Marie. So I, I'm just gonna call you Marie. Thank you Marie for sending in this story. It's called the Ouija board story. It says, hi Brenda, I thought to share with you another scary story from what I remember years ago. Okay, so when I was seven years old, almost every weekend at my grandmother's house, all my family members would get together to play the Ouija board game to try contacting my grandfather, oh my gosh, <laughs> who passed away years ago from an accident before I was born. So each time, after all of them would finish playing the game together, they all stayed over for the night, except me and my dad. Thank God, because that Saturday night, the bathroom door had slammed so hard a few times by itself. And two of my cousins said they overheard sounds of a horse or a goat running up and down the hallways. Oh no. And there were some loud bangs on the metal bunk beds and everyone thought it was one of my cousins playing a prank on them when he didn't do it. My uncle claims he saw some footprints of an animal over the baking soda that he had spilled that day with a smiling face next to it. And everyone, including my grandmother, ran out of the house that night. And they all stayed over at a hotel for a couple of days until my grandmother had invited a priest over to bless the house. Supposedly, one of my eldest cousins got rid of that game by burying it, but it ended up appearing back in her closet. After, she decided going with a second plan by burning it, which it worked. Rumors were that some worker at the store where my grandmother purchased a Ouija board at told her and my cousin that the game was real, but it was very harmless and fun to use, which it turns out it was a big lie. It was a lesson and learn situation, and because of that scary experience, it made my family members go more religious, not in a frantic way, but more closer to God. Thank you so much, Brenda, for sharing this other story with your viewers. I always admire your video stories from Marie. Thank you so much, Marie. What a crazy situation. Like, I, because first I was like, how does a family just get together and decide that they're going to play the Ouija board? But now it makes sense because 
whoever sold it to them was were like, oh, this is just a fun little game. Like, nothing could go wrong. And obviously, I guess they might have invited some kind of spirit into their world. Um, some kind of demon, it sounds like. Because as soon as I saw the thing about like it being like hooves walking up and down the stairs, I was like, no, ma'am, I cannot. Goat, goat or horse feet, whatever. So scary. And the little thing where they also were drawing stuff on the baking soda, so creepy. Who knows how many different spirits were let in and what else they could have let into the house that night. But good thing you weren't there to experience that because that sounds like a whole lot of paranormal trauma. <laughs> but thank you, Marie, once again for sending in a story for me to share here with my viewers. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and get into story number three. And this one is by an anonymous sender. It says, hey, Brenda, I'd like to remain anonymous for these stories. I've had a lot of scary experiences in my life, and if I'm being honest, I forgot half of them, due to how often they'd occur. However, from time to time, I'd randomly remember one of those forgotten memories, and either laugh at myself from how scared I was, or physically shiver from how eerie the experience was. And this is her first story. For years on end, I'd sit up in my bed and stare at the corner of the room, before I drifted to sleep. The reason being? Every night when all the lights in the house would be turned off, I would notice the figure of a veiled person standing at the opposite corner of my room. <laughs> at first, I used the logical explanation of it being a shadow casted due to the lights outside of the window. I would still sit and stare intensely at the shadow figure before going to bed anyway. It was just so strange to me how lifelike it looked. Even though I knew it was just a shadow, it always felt as if it were glaring at me as I glared back at it. I paid no mind to the odd shadow in the corner for the next few nights, but then something strange happened. As I got ready to go to sleep one night, I looked at the corner of the room and expected to see the usual creepy shadow, but it was gone. To see the usual creepy shadow, I thought, huh. I wonder what was casting that spooky shadow the rest of those times. I positioned my head away from that corner and tucked myself in the blanket a little more. Then my eyes so happened to glance at another part of the room and I almost jumped out of my skin. There it was. The shadow was at the opposite end of the room now. What made the shadow look even more sinister this time? It didn't appear to be cast on the wall. It looked like it was in front of the wall, like a three-dimensional object. And then she attaches a picture here. She says, this is the closest image I could find that looks like the figure I saw. It's so creepy. I don't even want to look at it while I'm reading this because I'm scared. <laughs> it looked like it was completely wrapped in black fabric and it covered the figure's entire body. Though the fabric draped over its face, for some reason, I could feel that it was a woman. I could sense that it was an older woman to be exact. There is no tangible reason why to assume it was a female energy, but my gut was telling me it certainly was. The figure would appear to be getting closer as the nights went by until we moved into our other house. I've never felt full on terrified of the shadow figure because again, I could tell that it wasn't going to cause any harm. But why was she always in my room staring at me when I was sleeping? I didn't know and I didn't want to know. But it was definitely one of the most unsettling experiences I've had. On second thought, maybe she did want to cause harm, but she couldn't because something was hindering her attempts. I am very firm in my Christian faith and always keep my personal relationship with Jesus Christ stronger than the organized religious practices at church. Gathering in the name of the Lord is very important too, but at the end of the day, I believe it's God and I who fight through the spiritual battles in life. I believe it was pure purely the Lord's work that kept my loved ones and I from being subjected to the evil intentions of whatever that entity was. Oh my god. Girl, I would not want to know either, to be honest. That's so creepy. But very good story, and honestly, I, I would be really interested in what it could have been and why it was just hovering in your room, you know? Now, let's go ahead and get into her second story, which says... One night, I had my usual shower and headed inside to get changed. I then remembered that I forgot to turn off a pipe in my backyard, which was connected to a garden hose. 
It was the dead of night and I figured I'd just go out in my towel as it's too dark for anyone to see me. Oh, bad idea already. <laughs> I closed the pipe and was merrily making my way up the stairs when suddenly I heard something move in the bushes outside my fence. When I turned to see what it was, to my terror, what looked like a woman in a white flowing dress was somehow floating in mid-air amongst the trees in the wooded area. She had long hair and her limbs were moving maniacally. I booked it up the stairs, too scared to even get a sound out of my mouth. My towel got stepped on while I stumbled up the stairs and got ripped off of me. I didn't even care. I wanted to be inside and had no time to wrap myself back up properly. For some reason, the door wouldn't open, so I banged on it, yelling for my mom to open it for me. When she opened it, I bolted inside with my towel barely hanging on, breathing heavily in hysterics. My dad was in the living room, eating a snack and watching TV. He turned to me with the most confused look and immediately got back to eating his snack and watching his movie. He could care less. My mom just stood there asking me what was going on. I didn't say anything, just peeked out the window to see if, if the ghostly lady was still there. Well, it wasn't a ghostly lady. That was the time I ended up locked out of my house but as naked in the dead of the night thinking a banana tree swaying in the wind was a ghost coming after me. I did say that sometimes I think back on my scary experiences and laugh at myself. This was one of those times. I was too embarrassed to tell my mom it was a banana tree I ran from so I told her it was a neighborhood street dog that made me startled. <laughs> If you do end up reading these stories to your BSS, then thanks in advance. Take care, Brenda. Oh my gosh, that <laughs> that last one was too good. But the first one, definitely very eerie. Um, I would be petrified if I ever saw anything like that. Even if it was a shadow, even if I thought it was a shadow something. Because I've had that experience where something looks like a figure because of the shape of like my hoodie or something on a chair or whatever and I literally jump out of my skin so I totally understand the feeling even though mine ended up being something just random I turn on the lights real quick and I'm like oh okay it was just a chair or whatever but I have had those times where I genuinely get scared for no reason and I'm like girl you need to relax like what are you so jumpy for but I definitely enjoyed both of the stories, even if the last one ended up being the banana tree and nothing, you know, no foul, no harm. But still a very scary experience for you. Obviously, you ended up tripping over your towel and like it was like a whole chaotic thing. Um, and your dad not caring. I was like, oh my god, like can you imagine like coming in like actually petrified and your dad just being like... Anyway, child, <laughs> like, he probably knew you were up to something, like, dumb. He was probably like, oh, this girl's scaring herself again, um, or something of the sorts. But anyway, thank you so much for sending that in. I almost said who it was by, but I was like, wait, anonymous. Not like, it's not like I can't cut it out or anything. But anyway, yeah, that is going to be the last story, you guys. I really do hope that you enjoyed these three scary stories. And um, hopefully this wasn't too short of a video. I couldn't really tell how long I've been filming for. But I did want to be able to put out a video for you guys this week. Even if I needed to film somewhere where I'm not usually at. And even if the quality isn't going to be as good because my lighting is my laptop. I don't have a microphone. Uh, I'm in the pitch darkness you know in an empty office and um yeah not the best situation but still i made it work hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and i am gonna go home soon and yeah guys before i do end today's video today's comment shout out goes to this person right here thank you so much for leaving a nice comment as always i really do appreciate it and it really makes my day and if you want to be the next comment shout out all you have to do is leave me a nice comment down below and that's it and if you did make it all the way to the end of the video leave me um uh, leave me a prayer hand emoji um, just because some of these I was like, yeah, if there's demons in here, we definitely, definitely, <laughs> we definitely need Jesus. But anyways, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. Um, and as I said, just leave that emoji. That way I know who stayed all the way to the end. And if you did stay all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you. And I love you so, so much. Hopefully I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to stay safe and be kind. Bye-bye.